guys, it is Charles for here, and I bought the Stanley Parable because I got a few likes on the video, so I figured that you guys liked it. And I got a feedback from a couple friends, and they said it was funny, so I figured, you know what, why not buy it? So I'm going to play it for a little bit right now, and we're going to see how it goes. I haven't played it at all, so let's get this thing going. The demo I thought was all right. Now I don't know exactly how that's going to connect to this, besides the fact that it's probably just absolutely random in this too. So we'll see you right now. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number four two seven. Employee number four two seven's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, of every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly this job, and Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. Hold on, guys, I'm gonna grab my he had water been at his quick. desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not <sighs> one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say, Hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay. <laughs> all of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, hold on. Let's uh, turn audio down because I figured, yeah, it did reset it with the new game. So I think it was about right here. I said it in the, the demo, so we'll keep it at about that. I don't really think it's going to change it much. Actually, I'm going to put on the headphones too because I remember it echoed in the demo. So hold on. Let me put in these headphones. There we go. All right, so um, we'll turn on closed captioning just in case. Full captions, yeah, okay. So that should be good. Let's resume. All right, so I don't remember exactly what he said. I'd probably go this way. Only open door. All right, so okay. Still no audio cue. I hate Mondays. Okay. I think I have an obsession with random mugs because in the demo I looked at all of them too, so. Oh, there's another one. No. Oh. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, what if I enter the door on my right? This was not the correct way to the meeting huh. room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. This is kind of cool. I like how there's multiple uh, pathways. Okay, so employee lounge first. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Okay. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you oh, sit okay. looking at these chairs and some paintings. Alright, I'm done boring really guys. worth it. <laughs> but uh... eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Did I really now? Should I? Should I take it? Or should I take this doorway? 
Oh, I can't get in the door. <laughs> Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Um, yeah, it is pretty incredible. Um, do not lie. If you are lying right now, stop. Okay. Um, yeah. Not jump from the cargo lift while it's in motion. It will cause death. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift. Thousand dollars. Penalty for jumping off cargo lift. Five thousand dollars. Okay, well it says I'm not gonna be alive, so apparently I'm not gonna be giving you a thousand dollars. Let's try this. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control <laughs> of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do. Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone <laughs> thinks you are very powerful. Okay. Well, <laughs> so that was pretty uh, anticlimactic. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? All right, Stanley so decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed the memo. go back the same way we went the first time. A nice twist of the storyline. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. So I think. Wow. Yes. Uh, this room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room was now too horrible even to consider. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. So, I think this these audio cues are louder than my voice, even though I lowered the audio. So, and I don't think there's a section to lower the actual voice audio, so... I'm probably just going to have to deal with the fact that every once in a while you guys aren't going to be able to hear me when I talk. So, don't worry, because I don't really have anything important to say anyway. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Alright, let's get back on. Look, Stanley, I this think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not jump. your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone oh, really? you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Oh, okay. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Okay. This is kind of scary. Okay, well, I guess, um... Time to get her back in my life. Oh. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another... All right, fine. I'll pick up the ding phone. Okay. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Your damn boy. <laughs> gotcha. Hey, oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife who'd want to commit their life to you? <laughs> That's messed up. I'm trying up. to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Okay. Well, that was pretty jazz. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him. And every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Uh, I have to press J. 
Looks like I have to press Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. Okay. But in his mind, ah, in his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. Oh, From behind like his that. desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Let's check the time. Press 8 to watch TV. Okay, where's the TV at? And so he began to fantasize about his uh, own job. First, he imagined that one day no while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Press one to spend time with the boys. So he Four went first. He imagined that he came to two the open boys doors be talking about and that here. he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Press okay. As he wandered Fine. through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again. And again. Over and over. Wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The oh, more I see what's he forgets happening. which life is the real one. I think it's turning into my office. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? <laughs> I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. Okay. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And Please die. Um. Wow, loading screen, that's impressive. It's the next GTA 5, guys. Stanley Parable. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley serious? decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, so it's all like restarting. This is confusing. Whoa, it looks different this time. Maybe it when Stanley know. came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, so I entered the door on my left this time. Yet there was not a single person here either. Tips Feeling a wave of disbelief, fired. Stanley decided to go up to his to boss's office, uh, hoping he might find an answer there. 
<laughs> That's cool. Using slides to assure employees that everything is okay. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some bevel on all the text. This will ensure a calm and productive work environment. Everyone is unique. You most of all. Okay. What you do synergize core value expenditures shift. Uh, that's pretty boring. No one cares about that crap. Alright. Let's just proceed. Or, uh, yeah, I don't care. Broom closet. I want to get a broom. This floor needs some sweeping. Wait, I think this is carpet. Oh no. Coming to a staircase, Whoa. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. What if I want to walk downstairs? Um, okay, I'm gonna walk downstairs. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe... He thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet Wait. when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Uh, simply they are repeating. No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at <laughs> last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the This is the such a it. confusing I'm game. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt. To have finally found okay, an so I'm answer, walking through an explanation. Repeating rooms. His co-workers weren't Where actually gone. Uh. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. Hmm. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Whoa. Stanley marveled this that he cool. had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? That is true. Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. So it's all a dream. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed Ooh. his eyes gently. And he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up. He thought to himself, I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. <laughs> Let me go back to my job. Let me continue oh, pushing the buttons. So I'm just going to wake Please. up and be back it's in the office. It's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay.
Wait. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Okay. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment Ain't that she stood there, got time staring for that. down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Okay. Uh, I gotta sneeze. Okay, apparently not. Back into the office again. So I'm sorry guys, this is kind of a hard game to commentate over, I guess. But it's interesting, so I don't really need to talk. I'll talk, you know, of course when he's not talking, but when he does talk, I'll just stop because it, it's inter this is an interesting game. It really twists your brain. Well, so far. So I'm guessing it only has four different endings and it's probably a pretty short game. I can't even get through this doorway. Okay, so now at this point he's not even saying anything. When Stanley came to a set of two there open doors, he entered the door on his left. I'm gonna enter the one on the right. This, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. What but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Okay, so we're gonna take this door. And so he detoured through the maintenance section walked straight ahead to the opposite door and got back on track. Oh. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up Apparently. to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming oh, to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Executive bathroom? Okay. Apparently there is no one in here either. Looks like a bedroom, not a freaking office. Gosh. Okay. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. Oh, and so see. the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Um. Oh. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Yeah, the first time the four didn't press. Yet incredibly, press by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped Whoa. into the newly opened passageway. Okay. 
so far this is a really cool game, you guys. I don't know how much I'm going to play of it tonight, because I'm probably going to get off around midnight and go to sleep, because i got school tomorrow. No one cares about that, but it seems like it might actually be a long game by the looks of it. So, back here. Here in darkness. Okay, so we have to go through this door. Oh, another loading screen. Hopefully I didn't speak too soon. And like puts me back in my office Descending again. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. This is the escape, so I'm going to take this route. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Ah. Okay. Let's see. The door there behind him was not oh. shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. I don't care. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Yep, I'm walking right to my death. I don't like this. Okay, whatever. Are you serious? So that's all that was. Wow. Wait. Oh. Okay. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. So he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There was Stanley. Wow. Okay. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. Huh? In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Dude, this game is a freaking... Oh my gosh. Okay, so I thought I was gonna die. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? The two doors, the set of two open doors was the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parables design. Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it, an exploration of the contradiction this room posed. Filing cabinets. Uh, okay. Office computer. The office. Button sounds. Okay, so that's kind of boring. That's kind of cool. Um. Ah. Uh... 
Okay, so I don't know if I just won or <laughs> if there's more to it. I have burning questions. For instance, on a scale of Max Ernst to Salvador Dali, how surreal will this game be? Were you born with the magnificent voice or did you bargain with a magician to receive it? Finally, Um, okay, so I'm not going to read all those because that will get really boring. I was trying to read that, but I didn't realize that it's a slideshow of emails. So there is my office, apparently. Okay, so this is the first. That's the second. That's the third. That was the evolution of the office, apparently. I can't take that yet. Countdown room as early an early version of the counter. Wait, I haven't been in there, so... Okay, so I haven't seen any of this stuff yet. Dude, this building is just huge. Boss's office. Okay, so let's go this way now. We haven't been this way yet. It's dark in here. Oh, I don't know. How about they're throwing a surprise party for him for all his button pushing? Does that sound plausible to you? See how it's impossible for the player to do anything in this room. Perfect example of all the so That's really quiet. It's the kind of thing you pick up on intuitively if you have it. Okay, so play lounge. Alright, so I think we've explored this whole building now, so we're gonna go back up there and back out to that little hole where it said the Stanley Parable. Oh, there's an elevator. Take it? <laughs> okay. Um. I think it's our. Um. I don't remember where this spot is now. This ru building is just so complex. Like. <laughs> I was never in here. Oh, okay. Um, this is like the most boring thing. Let's just get somewhere. Still yet to see those switches. This is the first one released May 2012. It features a series of broken rooms and the voice of the narrator informing viewers that he is preparing a new version of the Stanley Parable. That's boring. Okay. Begin the game again, resume it. Oh, that's kind of cool. 
this is like all the oh dude I'm like stuck I don't know where to go um, back this way okay we've been in here uh, oh god oh there it is okay I went right past it apparently <laughs> oh look at these two how they wish to destroy one another how they wish to control one another how they both wish to be free Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape. Back in here Press again. quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now. It'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time choose <laughs> I should have tried it. I don't know if what it would have done, but Okay, so apparently I have to do that. Let's see. This is the story of... What? Ah, uh, okay. All of his Back co-workers were... Go. Wait, no. This isn't the right office, is it? Alright, we'll do this Is this Stanley's office? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So many Yet there was not a single person here game. either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping he might come into a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, code, so. Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. Really? God, this thing is different every time. Feeling All soothed. Right. And rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Okay. Back this way we go. This is going to be probably somewhat of a long video, longer than most of my videos, but this game is pretty interesting, so I think it'll be worth it. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read All right, Mind so this time Control we're not taking Facility. I'm going to go straight into here. Apparently I need to click this button. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What yes. horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Can't press the button again. All right. So now we go over here. Now the monitors jump to life, their true nature revealed. Uh, Each bore the number of an employee in the building. 
Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Oh, well, we're here now. Ah, uh, so bright. I'm gonna look down. Boring. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Okay. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Okay. That's offline. Okay, so it's... Uh, maybe it's down here? Can't press that button for some reason. Okay, so we're gonna go up here and see if we can dismantle these controls. And when at last he found the source, I didn't even let him talk. I didn't even let him talk. I should have let him talk. How rude of me. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? I still have this voice talking in my head. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Oh, great. Ah. No way. No way. I already beat it. There's no way I beat it. Oh, wow. Okay, guys. Well, this is a short game, but there's more possibilities to it. So, 
I'll do another video of... I don't know if there will even be more possibilities, but apparently that's the whole game. So I'm gonna go check the achievements and see if there's more to it. Because there's no way. There's no way that's the whole game. There's gotta be some easter eggs or something. So uh, that's gonna be it for this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this what, like 40 minute video. So far, this has been a pretty cool game. After I look at the achievements, I will figure out what I need to do and play some more. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.